Hi, this is Michelle in the Children's Department at Ida Public Library for School Age Stories. Today I'm going to read you this story um, a little bit differently so you won't see my face but you will hear my voice because I thought that with this book it'd be really great to see close-ups of the pictures. Today's story is a non-fiction story so it is a true story and you'll see I have lots of birds next to me because this is a story about a bird. Today's story is called Pale Male, Citizen Hawk of New York City. It is written by Janet Schulman and illustrated by Melo So. One crisp autumn day in 1991, so that's quite a few years ago, um, like 30 years ago, a red-tailed hawk flew across the Hudson River from New Jersey. He flew over smokestacks, skyscrapers, and ant-like traffic to a rectangular oasis smack in the center of New York City. The hawk soared above Central Park. He surveyed the trees, the small lakes, the tall buildings on all four sides. And with his keen hawk vision, he spotted lunch. So many plump pigeons and rats and squirrels. Red-tailed hawks often stop for a few days and sometimes spend the winter in Central Park but they are shy birds and eventually fly away to quiet farmlands or wooded mountains. This bird was different. He liked what he saw and he stayed. Bird watchers in Central Park liked what they saw too, a spectacular red-tailed hawk. He loomed large in the sky with a wingspan of four feet wide and his unusual coloring, beige rather than dark brown, with breast and belly feathers nearly pure white, made him easy to track. The bird watchers named him Pale Male and kept notes on him daily. Pale Male hung around the park the way a teenager hangs out at the mall. That's kind of an old-fashioned reference. Teenagers did used to hang out at the mall a lot. He dived bomb tasty pigeons and rats at the litter can snack bars. He chased after ducks and was spotted terrorizing squirrels seemingly just for the fun of it. As red-tailed hawks go, he was a teenager. His brown tail feathers gave it away. These hawks don't get their distinctive reddish-brown tail feathers until they are mature, which is about two years old. So you may notice red-tailed hawks around here. We have many red-tailed hawks in the Belvedere area. Um, they are mostly wild birds. Um, you'll see them in wooded areas. I often see them on country roads when I'm driving into town. Pale Male thrived in his new home, and the birders were thrilled when he began courting another red tail hawk. Day after day, they performed an aerial ballet of circling and swooping in unison over the park until, young as he was, Pale Male won her as his mate. Central Park where this story starts out is in the middle of New York City. It is a green park, very large as you can see in this picture. And um, it is actually a nicer area of New York City where people would pay a lot of money to live. Um, as you can see, it's a very large park and a, a good place where large birds could go to live. In March, the two hawks began building a nest in a tree near the baseball diamond on the Great Lawn. This was the first time that hawks had nested in the park since it opened in 1858. But Pale Male and his mate were inexperienced nest builders. Their nest fell apart a month later. Undaunted, the two hawks immediately began building another nest in a tree near East 70th Street. This time, it was not poor construction, but the location that did them in. The tree they chose had housed a crow's nest the year before. Crows are natural enemies of hawks, and the crows of Central Park responded with unusual ferocity when they saw hawks nesting in their tree. Flocks of screaming black birds harassed the two hawks every time they left their nest. Finally, Pale Male's mate became so disoriented that she slammed into a high-rise on East 73rd Street. Witnesses called the Audubon Society. Her wing was badly broken, and she was taken to a hawk rescue center in New Jersey. The bird watchers wondered what would happen to Pale Male now. They waited and watched, but the following winter, Pale Male, now sporting a flashy red tail, found a new mate. In March, they began building a nest. This nest would be different. This time, Pale Male moved his residence 
to a ledge above a top floor window at 927 Fifth Avenue, one of New York City's most exclusive and expensive apartment buildings. Bird watchers had never heard of a red-tailed hawk with its nest on a building in the center of a bustling city. Maybe Pale Mail wasn't too smart, but they soon saw that this bird was actually very smart. Metal spikes had been embedded in the ledge above the window to keep pigeons away. But forcing sticks and branches between these spikes, the hawks made a nest that could withstand hurricane winds. An ornate cornice hanging over the ledge provided protection from the elements. The building was just across the street from some of Pale Mail's favorite hunting grounds in Central Park. And the view of the park from the 12th floor was spectacular. New Yorkers couldn't ask for a better address and neither could Pale Mail. As spring progressed, Pale Mail and his mate took turns sitting on three eggs. Ignoring window washers and wailing fire engines and honking horns below, they sat and sat, and birders watched and waited. The eggs should have hatched by late April or early May. Finally, in June, it became obvious that eggs were not going to hatch. The hawks' small fan club was disappointed. But later in June, their sadness turned to shock when they discovered that the building management of 927 Fifth Avenue had removed the nest. Residents had complained about bird droppings, feathers, and the remains of dead animals sometimes falling to the sidewalk in front of their building. The wealthy New Yorkers who lived there did not consider these messy hawks to be the kind of neighbors they wanted. I mean, to be fair, if you had giant hawks living above your front door, it would be kind of obnoxious. But it would be kind of cool, too. This is 927 Fifth Avenue in New York City. Um, so you can see that they uh, lived way up here at the top. Okay, way up here. Some hawk experts thought that Pale Mail would find a new nest site, but Pale Mail would not be evicted. He and his mate returned in the spring and built a new nest exactly where the old one had been. This time, the building management left it alone thanks to a stern warning from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service threatening substantial fines. Hawks are protected under the Migratory Bird Treaty Act of 1918. Destroying their nests was a serious violation. And a year later, in April 1995, the hawks' perseverance was rewarded. Three fluffy white chicks were born in New York City. The hawk watchers of Central Park were ecstatic. From early morning until nightfall, they gathered around the model boat pond to get the best view of the nest. They watched mom and dad hawk tend their babies and talked about the chicks like proud new aunts and uncles. So this is kind of a blurry picture of Pale Male and his chicks. Um, this is probably because this picture was taken a very long time ago, um, you know, 30 years ago. And um, it's probably taken from a zoom lens and then put on the internet and then put into this slideshow. So you can see it gets a little blurry with all that action, but you can see the little baby red-tailed hawks there. New Yorkers on their way to work or out for a stroll wondered what celebrity these people could be spying on with their binoculars and telescopes. The enthusiastic hawk watchers were always happy to point out the nest and it was the rare person who was not surprised and delighted to discover a family of hawks making a home right in the city. News of the hawks spread, and soon New Yorkers, who had never been bird watchers before, were stopping by the model boat pond to see what they could see. You can see they have to use binoculars and telescopes to be able to see the birds. The hawks were becoming Fifth Avenue's most admired celebrities. By June, the chicks had grown almost as large as their parents. Gone was their baby down. Now they had flight feathers. They began jumping up and down in the nest and flapping their wings in preparation for their first flights. In the wild, their nest would have been in a tree with branches to hop down to until they got the hang of flying. The birders were worried. Would these city hawks survive that scary first flight with nothing but cement and asphalt below them? The first fledgling took off with a big hop and then began flapping his wings madly like an oversized sparrow until he landed, awkwardly but safely, on the roof of an apartment building several blocks up Fifth Avenue. 
The fledgling spent the day half flying, half hopping from balcony to balcony until Pale Mail gave his brave baby a first lesson in how to fly like a self-respecting hawk. The fledgling watched his father soar over the Metropolitan Museum of Art and circle back with scarcely a flap of his wings. The novice caught on and proudly flapped slowly back to his nest just in time for dinner. Within a few days, all three fledglings had abandoned their cramped nest for the trees of Central Park. Each spring, more and more fans of the hawks became, came out to watch Pale Male and his mate re renovate their nest with new twigs and leaves. And there was always a great celebration when new chicks hatched. The birders watched the hardworking parents ferry home pigeons, rats, and occasionally a squirrel or a songbird from their well-stocked Central Park meat market. Even after fledglings left the nest, they would stay under the protection of their parents for several months. Pale Mill would always respond to their hungry cries with some meat. He would chase off those pesky crows and let his hawklets know that the blue jay bullies couldn't really harm them. This good dad was once observed helping his hawklets learn to catch rodents by dropping a live mouse near one of them. Over the next nine years, the hawks would rear 23 chicks, and a CBS News commentator actually nominated Pale Male for Father of the Year. Life in the big city was good for the hawks. Little did Pale Male know that his greatest challenge was yet to come. In December 2004, the owners of 927 Fifth Avenue removed Pay Mill's nest along with the anti-pigeon spikes that anchored it. Most of the tenants had been irked for years they couldn't legally get rid of the hawks. They didn't like walking through the poop and feathers and dead birds. Then in 2003, during a time when many conservation and wildlife laws were being relaxed by President George W. Bush's administration, the Migratory Bird Treaty was changed. It now permitted destruction of nests as long as there were no eggs or chicks in the nest. Hawks lay their eggs in March and the chicks fledge in June. In December, Pale Male's nest was empty. The owners of the Hawk Building were quick to take advantage of the new law. All of New York heard about it in a flash. Television newscasts told all of America. The news traveled abroad in Japanese, French, Arabic, and many other languages. New Yorkers and native lovers everywhere were stunned. Nature lovers everywhere were stunned. Taking down the nest seemed like such a heartless act coming from people living in their own well-feathered nests. The dedicated bird watchers and the Audubon Society immediately organized protests across Fifth Avenue from the Hawk Building. Every day, more and more people joined the chorus chanting, Bring back the nest, bring back the spikes, shame, shame. Two protesters dressed as birds and urged cars on Fifth Avenue to honk for hawks. Taxis, cars, and city buses honked. Trucks let out ear-piercing blasts of their air horns. Even fire trucks let loose their sirens. Pale males circled high above the protesters, silently watching. After a week, with hundreds of protesters blocking the sidewalk with traffic slowed to a crawl, with the constant, relentless noise, the building owners backed down. The publicity had been terrible for them. The Audubon Society and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service finally persuaded the owners to reinstall the anti-pigeon spikes and to construct an apron or a cradle below the nest to catch the hawk's garbage. The hawks kept a wary eye on the ledge until the spikes and apron were installed and the workers' scaffolding was finally removed. Within minutes, the hawk couple began bringing new twigs to the ledge. They would rebuild their home and start all over again. The red-tailed hawks had brought great joy to the people of New York, and now the people of New York returned the favor. The hawks were welcome to stay at 927 Fifth Avenue as long as they wanted. They were true blue New Yorkers, tough, resourceful, and determined to make it in the city. New Yorkers loved them for bringing a touch of the wild and a respect for nature to the teeming urban landscape. It's a very big city. Pale Mail gave the city another gift as well. In the spring of 2005, some 15 blocks south of Pale Mail's nest, another red tail and his mate set up housekeeping. They built their nest on a ledge on the 35th floor of Trump Park on Central Park South and hatched two chicks. Bird watchers believe that this light-colored hawk with a taste for high-rise apartments is probably a son of Pale Male. Junior is his name, and so the legacy of Pale Male, the majestic hawk who is different, lives on. Long live Pale Male. 
Um, this is an actual photograph of Pale Mail, I think. I'm not 100% positive, but I think so. Um, Pale Mail lived a long time ago. Some people think he might still be alive. It is technically possible that he could still be alive, but it's probably more of a legend now that he is still alive. Um, it's just he doesn't live in that area anymore. Um, but it is possible that it's now the story of his sons and grandsons. That is the end of the story. Um, you can go ahead and download the crossword puzzle if you would like, um, or you could listen to the author's note. This was written in 2008 by the author. I first learned of Pale Mail in 1995 during an Audubon bird walk in Central Park. On that bird walk, I also learned that Central Park is one of the 14 best places in America to bird watch, ranking right up there with Yosemite National Park. 275 different species have been spotted in the park, 95 on just that one April day I was there. As the American Northeast becomes an almost solid belt of housing development, shopping malls and parking lots, more and more migrating birds are stopping off to rest and refuel at this green zone. Native wildlife is also affected by the shrinking rural areas surrounding New York City. With less open country and less food, many hawks do not survive their first winter. Some believe that pale male was driven off his natural habitat by adult hawks protecting their territory, and that he was forced to go far afield to find a place with ample food and no adult hawks to harass him. After the Audubon birders pointed out pale male's eight-foot-wide nest atop the ritzy Fifth Avenue apartment building, I would stop by each spring to see if there were chicks. And when there were, it always seemed like a miracle that these naturally shy wild birds could adapt so well to America's noisiest, busiest steel and concrete city. Pale male has had four mates, First Love, Chocolate, Blue, and his mate since 2002, Lola. Only when his mate was killed or seriously injured did he take a new mate. He has now won the status of a true New York celebrity. His building is pointed out by tour bus operators. Central Park, with its 843 acres, is large enough to support a number of hawk families. In addition to Pale Male and the hawk Cole Jr., a red tail and his mate have reared two chicks in their nest perched on the limestone shoulders of St. Andrew on the Cathedral of St. John the Divine, just north of Central Park. These hawks and several others frequently spotted near the tennis courts may be offspring of pale male. And so might the two red tails I frequently see in Riverside Park, about a half mile west of Central Park. Red-tailed hawks like to set up housekeeping not too far from where they hatched. New York City's parks are much more than a refuge for a million of New Yorkers. Besides the many birds, including a wild turkey in Central Park, I have seen rabbits, frogs, turtles, and countless squirrels. Raccoons, woodchucks, and snakes also live there, not to mention many different species of butterflies. And in 2005, a coyote was found hiding there. Taking a walk through Central Park is always a nature lover's delight. If you are lucky, you may even see pale male. Although, like I said, he's probably a legend now. And that is the end. And talk to you in two more weeks.